everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about strawberry freezer jam and I'm going to share the entire process of how I'm making that with you. I will link the recipe that I'm using below in the description box. This is actually my first time using this specific recipe. I'm sure that you will hear both of the girls in the background slash see them in this video because they are just playing outside while I start on the strawberries. So I have not uploaded a video in a hot minute. It's been probably close to a month since I have filmed, edited, or uploaded anything. Honestly, I think it's just the warm weather. We have been so busy. We spend most of the day outside. I wanted to make a point to get this specific video filmed because I'm really excited about the strawberries that I have. Um, I was actually gifted these uh, strawberries. Oh no. Caroline just dropped um, a glass quart jar and it shattered all over the ground. So that's nice. So I'm gonna have to go clean that up. Nothing is ever like easy and quick, you know? So now I think we're ready. But anyway, I think I was talking about um, the strawberries. I was gifted them. My mother-in-law actually went and picked them for us. And um, they're very ripe. So filming this video was kind of my motivation to actually uh, make sure that I got this done. So what I did was as soon as I got them, I rinsed them and I just spread them out on like a kitchen towel and I let them dry completely overnight. I just covered them with a sheet of paper towel. And then yesterday morning, I put all of the completely dry berries into my um, glass quart jars, put lids on them and stuck them in the fridge. First step that I'm going to do is pull them. So I have my little, I actually don't know if this is just called a holer or what, I borrowed it from my mom, but um, you could use just like a paring knife or whatever you have. It makes it super easy to scoop the hole out without wasting a lot of the berry. I'm trying to get this camera to focus and then I remembered this is my first video shooting with my new vlogging camera. I actually have a real vlogging camera now. My husband got me a camera for my birthday which was actually a month ago and I am just now filming my first video with it but I am so so happy because now I don't have to use my phone to film with. I was just shooting all my videos on my iPhone which works okay for a like beginning vlogger, YouTuber, whatever. I definitely don't like calling myself a YouTuber, but you know, an iPhone works perfectly fine, but it drains my battery. Uh, it fills my phone storage up. I have to like clear out my storage like every week, basically after I film a new video, I have to go in and you know transfer everything and transfer the footage. So it's just really nice to have a real camera now. But that being said, this is my first time using it. So I apologize if the audio is off or you know the focus isn't right. I just have it on auto because I really don't know what I'm doing with it yet. I really need to do some research and learning about all the different settings and all of that. But yeah, so if you notice the video quality is better, I hope you noticed that, that's a good thing. But um, I apologize if things are a little wonky. I will learn from this video and then hopefully be able to fix it for future videos. So I'm gonna turn you around, show you the berries, and then we're gonna go ahead and hole as many as I can until the girls need to go inside and have lunch. So I'm going to hole all of these into this bowl here, which I need to clean out. And then I have like a smaller little uh, bowl for the tops. I'm gonna save those and give them to the chickens. So that's my goal here is to get all of these berries holed before lunchtime, so let's go. Here. Hi.
All right, so it is a couple of hours later. Both the girls are napping right now. Next, we need to mash the berries up. And I know it's tempting to get out your food processor or your blender, but I recommend just doing it by hand, either with a uh, potato masher or a pastry cutter like this. If you do it by hand, you're going to end up with a lot of bigger chunks of berries, which is really good, or at least I really like that when I'm making jam. I never tried using a potato masher, but when I was reading through um, the notes from the recipe that I'm using, she said that she uses a potato masher, so I'm like, well, maybe I'll try that, but I don't know. I just, I like the sharp edges on this. I thought this recipe looked interesting because you do not cook it on the stove top at all. It's only cooked in the microwave. And she explains all of that in the description of the recipe, why she does it in the microwave. Um, something with the uh, graininess of the sugar that can sometimes be an issue with uh, strawberry freezer jam is sometimes it doesn't have a great smooth consistency. And she said she's found that using the microwave instead of cooking on the stove top is like the perfect way to dissolve the sugar and make sure you have like a really nice smooth jam. So I thought that was interesting and it is like a hundred degrees. No kidding. It is like a high of a 95 degrees or something here today. And I do not want to be heating up my kitchen. So like on the stove top or, you know, with a canner, if I was actually canning this, um, jam so it's nice that I can just do it in the microwave and then stick it in the freezer and it requires really no heat other than obviously the microwave so I thought that was interesting okay I'm pretty sure this is good enough I don't think I want to do any more go any further because I want to keep those chunks so now what I'm going to do is I have a microwave safe bowl here it's not very big but I don't have a very big bowl that is microwave safe so hopefully this fits one batch and then i might just have to do like a second batch um, rather than just doubling the recipe and doing it all in one because i definitely don't have a bowl that's big enough for that so um i am going to measure out two cups of the crushed um strawberries so now I'm going to add four cups of granulated white sugar to this and stir it for one minute. And when I was reading through the recipe, she's very specific about all of the intervals of time that you need to be stirring it and cooking it for. And she says to set a timer and do it for exactly as long as she says in the recipe. Uh, again, just to make sure that the consistency is right at the end. So let me get my sugar. Four cups. All right. Hopefully this doesn't bubble up very much as it's cooking in the microwave. Let's hope that that was one minute. So the next step is to stick this in the microwave on high for three minutes. And it does not say to stop at any point and take it out and stir or anything. Just cook for three minutes, take it out and then stir for another minute. So that's what we're gonna do. And I see a little stem. Sometimes you do find like stems and little pieces of the leaves and it's not a big deal. Just pick them out as you find them. All right, so my camera battery died and I needed to charge it. So it is a couple hours later now, but I wanted to show you where we are in the process. So you saw me stick the strawberry puree into the microwave for three minutes. When it came out of the microwave, it was warm, but it was not bubbling or cooking or anything like that, just like the recipe said. So what I did then is I stirred the mixture for a minute straight and then I just let it set for two hours and I did end up doubling the recipe uh, so just keep that in mind for the rest of this video when I'm talking about the amounts I'm using uh, because I am using those four quarts of strawberries so these have both been setting now for two hours every 30 minutes I did go in and stir it just for like five or ten seconds and you can see now that it looks kind of clear, like it doesn't look cloudy anymore. And it has like this really nice deep red color. So that means that we are ready to move on to the next step. It's really, really simple from here on. I am just going to mix my liquid pectin with lemon juice. I actually already have some fresh lemon juice here that I was uh, using to make a salad dressing earlier. And this is the brand that I'm using. It's just the Serto. 
um, liquid pectin. It has two pouches in here, which is perfect for what I need because each, like a single recipe of this would just use one pouch. So what you do is mix one pouch of this pectin with two tablespoons of lemon juice, and then you mix that in with your strawberries and then just fill the jars up and put the lids on. That's it. And then you let it set for 24 hours at room temperature before you freeze it or put it in the fridge. After you add this stuff, you're going to stir it by hand for three minutes straight, three whole minutes of stirring before you fill the jars. So make sure you don't forget that step. I'm going to start filling these up. These are just like four ounce little jelly jars, but they're perfect for um, giving us gifts. And they actually also work perfect for us because we don't go through a lot of jam at one time. So if I pull one of these out of the freezer, this is enough for like a couple meals just to spread on rolls or bread or whatever. I'm not 100% sure how much this recipe will make. So I'm going to start by filling up my 12 four ounce jars and then I might do a couple of these as well um, just to have for like the holidays or if we have a big get together or something, I can pull one of those larger jars out. And just a little tip, I like to use old newspaper um, to lay under my jars and stuff when I'm filling them. And you saw me use newspaper out on the picnic table too. It's just nice um, to catch drips and strawberries can kind of stain certain surfaces too. Um, so it's just nice to be able to throw it away and then I'm not wasting like paper towel or something like that. All right, so here we go. Caroline is having some blueberries while mommy does this. If you're wondering, I am squishing them before I give them to her, don't worry. <laughs> I used to uh, quarter blueberries. Sometimes I still do. It depends on how much time I have, but typically I don't have any time. So I just squish them to remove the round shape before I give them to her. Got a small bowl here and I'm going to add my pectin. I've never used liquid pectin before. I've only ever used the powdered stuff. So we will see. And then two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. Mix that together. Okay, I will get you some more. I'll get you some more in just a second. Now it's ready to add to the strawberries. We're going to fill Caroline on blueberries. Um, and uh, get her maybe some crackers or something that will last a little bit longer. Okay, I do want to be pretty exact about the time here. So I'm going to set my timer for three minutes. And I'm also going to move to the other side so I can see you guys. So dump in the pectin. I feel like I'm just going to make some dumb mistake at this point and then ruin all these beautiful strawberries. I am so excited to have jam in the freezer. You are so cute. You're too cute. I'm just distracted. You're going to have to make me forget to stir. Um, I'm excited to have jam in the freezer, but I would like to eventually can, actually can some jelly and jam and stuff like that because that would just, it keeps a little bit longer and I'm not reliant on a freezer. So we have quite a bit of food in our freezer. We have a lot of meat. We actually have other than the freezer in our house, we have three large freezers because we usually have our own beef and we also have family that raise pork and chickens. So we have a lot of meat in the freezer, which is great, but we're also reliant on electricity, obviously, to keep our freezers running. And if we were to lose power, uh, depending on the temperature, if we were to lose power in the heat that we have right now and the temps that we have right now, um, it would not take long for everything to thaw out and then go bad. So I don't know. I would like to start moving more toward canning so that I have stuff that is shelf stable. And like I said, I'm not reliant on a freezer, but there are certain things like freezer jam, freezer corn, uh, that's just so convenient and easy to do. And it's, it takes a lot less work and time 
than canning. So it's really tempting to do it. But yeah, I do want to move more forward canning. So if you would be interested in um, any type of canning videos, let me know. I'm actually thinking about doing a ground beef canning how-to video um, because I would like to can some of the ground beef we have. We have a ton of it in our freezer right now. So just to see how it goes. My mom actually used to can ground beef uh, when I was growing up and chicken too. So quick and easy to add to like soups, casseroles, stuff like that. So I would like to do that in the near future. So let me know in the comments if you would be interested in seeing any canning videos. Are you going to be okay while I fill the jars up? Are you going to behave and eat your peppers? So like I said, I'm just going to start with my smaller jars because I'm not sure how much. Hi, honey. Did you wake up from your nap, baby? Did you have a good nap? Alright, so that is everything for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely let me know if you tried this recipe out down in the comments and also let me know if you want to see more videos like this about food preservation, freezing, canning, that sort of a thing. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.